shit out of the way. Um, good. Who's, who's this? Alright. Uh, mine, mine. Oh god. There you go. I was about to throw it at the um, Alright, so um, I'm going to talk about, is this too loud? Maybe it's too loud. Is this too loud? Good. Alright. But after Max stock, just put it out here. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the answer to and give you an official status update. Um, and hopefully, if we'll have four minutes left at the end, I'm going to give you a really cool, fast um, introduction to a new feature that I just implemented uh, yesterday. So um, if you've used Answer, how many people here use Answer or know about Answer? That's great. How many uh, people here um, uh, know about Answer 2? Just a quick survey. Oh, all right, good. How many people use it? <laughs> yeah, I especially like the. Okay, so um, talk a bit about Dancer. First of all, Dancer really is it's awesome. It's fantastic. It's great. Um, it really, really, really is. It is very fun to use. It is very fun to share. We want to show things, right? Um, it is what I would like to call profilely beautiful, which means that it's a really nice showcase of how you can have beautiful Perl code, okay? And really nice technology and really nice um, abilities for, for our uh, applications. And it is a very good way to attract newbies. We get, oftentimes, we get people who join the Dancer channel and talk to us about writing a new piece of software and they go like, well, yeah, I don't actually know Perl, but I saw this thing and it looks really nice. So I would like to learn Perl just enough so I could write in Dancer. And um, this is a very, very important point to know. Um, that we, when we have really nice technology, people pick up on that. And job-wise, marketing-wise, uh, it's very successful. There are now a few uh, job descriptions that actually include, hey, if you know Dancer, this is useful for you in our job. And as I just explained, it is a very good showcase of what Modern Pro is and what Modern Pro should be. So overall, not bad. Of course, the community is awesome. The community is fantastic. Um, we have a very lively, a very warm, happy, kind community. It's fantastic. Sorry? So they claim. So until you join. So um, we have a, don't troll. So we have a, a very happy community. Um, overall, it's also very successful. 80, 850 stars, which used to be watchers, on GitHub with over 300 forks, um, over 1,600 issues. It's insane. And I'm just talking about GitHub. That does not include RT, mailing list, emails, IRC. We take bug reports and feature requests from every possible channel. Okay, so if you email one of us, or if you email to the list with something, we'll create a ticket, or we will work with you to create the ticket. <laughs> Sorry, kid, you're annoying. Um, so, um, that, that also does include stuff that the community created, like plugins, uh, hey, we do some conference talks, not just me, uh, pro monitors, um, and uh, articles. So, overall, it's just very, very successful, it's very warm, it's very uh, fluffy and fun to work with. And, of course, that means we're also getting very famous. Uh, we have some newspaper articles and magazines and, and blogs and news websites and, and there's a few companies that use uh, uh, booking, like that use uh, answer like uh, hey booking and Shutterstock and Noble and UK2 UK2 is an ISP Noble have an entire product that is based on uh, Dancer uh, Shutterstock have some search stuff and booking has various utilities also written Dancer. There's some government websites that are written in Dancer. There's some personal blogs. There are wikis. There are actual libraries that are written in Dancer. It's really, really nice to see. It's very exciting. And we participated in Google Summer of Code. How many people here know Google Summer of Code? Fantastic. So you know what it is. How many people here know the Outreach Program for Women? So it's a, a, a very similar program that tries to influence, um, to get some companies, not more to influence, but to get companies to sponsor uh, women to go into open source, it's fantastic. Uh, so we also participate in that. So all of this kind of leads to this thing. Why the answer to? If everything is great, what the problem? <laughs> what is the problem? And more importantly, where is the answer to? Which is a question that we get asked uh, quite often. So when we talk about the answer to, I actually want to start with something else. Suppose your coworker says, hey, you know what? 
I think I'll just use globals to solve this problem here. Can anyone imagine your response? Mine is this. Right? Because they're horrible. They're really, really bad. Um, globals are singletons, which basically means we get one instance, and we only get one instance, and every other attempt to work goes to that instance. So it's one shared information between all of the other consumers. In dance, we're one requests, responses, serializers, hooks. They're all global. They're all singletons. This means that the um, serializers, for example, if you have a serializer that automatically ser deserializes requests that come in in JSON format and provides you with just object that you can work with or structure that you can work with, and when you're done with that and you throw a structure out, it serializes automatically to JSON back, all of your dancer applications in that process will do that for you, all of them. You cannot change this. And your hooks, they're global. This becomes a problem. Um, and this is, it's important to know because people go like, well, why did you do this? We didn't. What we actually did was take an existing framework called Sinatra, written in Ruby. The founder of Dancer is also a Ruby programmer. He really liked Sinatra. It's very nice. And he said, well, don't, wouldn't it be nice to have this thing in Pro 2? And he ported it. <clears throat> and this, this is the design of Sinatra. So we're kind of stuck with this. And when people came in to the answer and they went, you know what, I'm thinking I'm going to use this for like serious stuff. Oh, this is great. And then they realized, oh, wait, this is a problem here. We cannot have singletons everywhere. This means that you cannot also run multiple apps in a single process. And there was an available fix uh, pretty early, but we didn't want it. Um, so we didn't merge it. We wanted it to be done right, and the fix was kind of like a workaround. So what did we do? We started the answer 2. So the answer 2 is a rewrite of the code. It has no globals. Well, there is one, but that's just the runner. You only, we always have just one. There's a DSL meta layer. It's a completely separate layer, which means that we can hack on the internals as much as we want, and your code, which is the DSL, stays exactly the same, which is fantastic. So I can break shit as much as I want. You won't ever see it. It's really, really good for developers. We have clean internals as much as we can. We're working on cleaning them even more. And we're using Moo, which is a very good object system. So we don't have to reinvent that thing. So overall, hell yeah. So what is the answer to in a few other words? Um, first of all, it's more compartmentalized, which means that Everything is more separated, so each app is its own thing, <clears throat> has its own context, it has its own <clears throat> scope. <clears throat> um, it's more componentized, so when you create apps, you can actually use them in different places. It's fantastic. And it's more decoupled, same direction. Also, the answer to is more dependencies relaxed. This means that we don't actually care about dependencies. I know some people do. But what we did was actually ask our users. We were like, well, what if we keep the dependencies down to, say, maybe four or five dependencies, or fewer, or maybe six? And they were like, we don't give a shit. We don't care about dependencies. If we're at the point that we can use Dancer, we can use dependencies, OK? When you take a look at CPEN Linus, and Carton, and Fatpacker, and Pinto, dependencies are not a problem anymore. Just knowing that you can use these. There's local lib, not on the list here, but some of it uses it. So it's really, it's no longer an issue. And another interesting point is that the answer to by default and by policy <clears throat> is what we call fat packable. And that means that you can always pack your entire application, including all of the code of the answer to, into a single file. That's it. You can send that file. It's everything in it, bundled. So no dependency problems. So we're much more relaxed. We're much more oriented towards cooperation with other frameworks. That means that if there is a commonality, and in some cases there are, with Catalyst or WebSimple, or any other web framework that wants to join in on this attempt, we actually try to find a comfortable way that suits all of us. One interesting example is route definitions, or route definitions, where you have a path 
and you have a main language to define that path, like colon for a variable name or a question mark for optional. And WebSimple also has a root definition. And we wondered, could we join these and merge them into what root definition that both systems could use? We can, and we probably will. Another interesting point is that we really try to push more things into middlewares so they can be shared across systems and across frameworks. So again, going towards cooperation rather than building our own niche that no one else can play with. And lastly, <clears throat> answer to is an opportunity to get it done right. To get it done on an architecture level, to get it done on a programming level, to get it done as like a really good Pro program and I came. An interesting example is this guy. This is Jean. Jean is from uh, Luxembourg, living in Germany. And when I went to the German Pro workshop just now, he came up and he was like, hey, I would like to contribute. What do I do? And we found an issue right away in core that we needed some help with. It was a, it was a small feature that we wanted, which was could be maybe a feature or a bug or missing implementation. And he grokked the entire code base as much as he needed and finished the feature off on his own in under two hours. He came up a bit later, hey, I'm done, I pushed it. Could you uh, look at it? Holy like, shit. So it is an opportunity for all of us to get into programming as well. So what is the development process of Dancer 2? Uh, it currently looks like this. There's a lot of reflecting, a lot of anguish. There's Berserker releases in which I get absolutely insane, uh, uh, batshit crazy, and just ah, release. Not very good. And what it should look like is this. Time box release cycles, something like every two weeks, which we're definitely moving up to. A policy document that defines what our policy is regarding several different concepts. It exists. We need to revise it and release it. We need to have coordinators. So someone coordinating the documentation. So if you want to contribute to the documentation, just go to the coordinator and he says, OK, here's something we need help with. Oh, you just contributed something. Let me merge it and give you the feedback on that. And we need some compatibility shims, just to make sure that we're breaking as, least, uh, as few things as possible. Which leads us to how, how do we actually fix this? How do we actually reach that point? So we have a problem of not enough time. But we're improving on this. One of the biggest things is to make the answer a business priority. And I know that we don't like the idea of corporates, but once this becomes something that companies actually use, that means that we can actually put company time on it and company money on it. And that is very, very important. We need to make some revisions to the policy uh, document. We need to get the coordinators to coordinate. We have coordinators, but they have too many tasks. They didn't actually get to coordinate anything, which means that everyone can be a coordinator. So if you're actually thinking, hey, I can actually coordinate some documentation patches. I don't mind. Please join us. We want to have more core devs. We recently added Russell Jenkins, Stephen Humphrey, and our very own Mickey Masayachi, who gave the talk about MetaSip and Client. These are fresh fresh blood into the uh, core devs list, which is fantastic. And we, make, we need to make a shit list or a hit list, depends, um, which are like our important things, the things that we want to change and tackle on that are still not the way we want them to be. So what I would uh, tackle myself. This is my personal sh hit list. I want to have full support for raw PSGI subroutines. Work on the way, actually, this is not working. And you know what this means? This means that the answer is now completely asynchronous. It's really nice. I'm going to show a, a, I'm going to show a recorded console uh, session showing this. We need to improve our path detection. We want to uh, revise the hook system, get some more uh, interoperability with plugins. There's some internal cleanup that we want to do. Um, what is the coupling, the configuration rules? Done. We had a hackathon yesterday. Another one is removing the answer to test, uh, or at least the usage of the answer to test. Done. I did this during the uh, uh, German Pro Workshop because all the talks were in German, so I had a lot of time to hack. And um, there's the server role that was con conflated with, uh, with uh, the runner role, and, and that's it. It's done. It's cleaned right off uh, at the hackathon yesterday as well. Uh, I want to improve the session handling a bit, and honestly, that's, this is like the list, and most of this is done, so I'm really, really excited. 
So where do we go now? Um, corporate attention leads to development and maintenance time. Sponsorship and donations lead to hackathons, like the one we had yesterday. And workshops also lead to hackathons, but which is under collaboration, also provide user uh, visibility and feedback. So this is your time to shine as users. <coughs> and please, grab me later. We can have a chat about it. Now, this is this part of the talk. How much time do I have left? Well, there's nobody speaking. I don't even know what time it is. Until the light goes first, start. Two or three minutes. All right. So in these two or three minutes, I'm going to show a four-minute presentation. Um, there we go. No. That's this one. Okay. So it's start. Um, what I have here is a screen with four panes. Okay. And I'm going to show this dancer app. It's a package named Event Based App. And it will use answer two just to get the syntax. Okay, I'm going to use any event to have some event-based uh, um, routines. We're going to use time high res to get uh, an accurate time and high resolution. There's an array here to keep all of the timers that we're going to create with any event. These timers are going to run uh, things that take longer, uh, long polling. There's a root here called, called uh, slash ping, and that will just return the date of time. Now we're going to have a longer running, um, a longer running request. It's going to be in slash long, and I just want to show what we're going to do here. It's going to return a subroutine, and that's going to get a responder, which is a code reference. This is a pure plaque, a pure PSGI response and responder. There's no dancer stuff going in here, but it's just facilitated by dancer. We create a new timer using any event into the timers array. It will run after five seconds. Interval zero, which means it will only run once, and it's going to run this callback. Which, with it, after five seconds, it's going to call the responder code ref and send it a pure PSGI response that just says 200 OK, um, no um, headers, and the content high. So there's a timer here that when you go too long, it does in just five seconds and then sends high. And then we shift the timers just to throw out the object we created. And at the end, I have get slash sleep, which just leaves five seconds. So I want to show the difference between non-blocking sleep, which is a timer, and blocking sleep, which is actual sleep call. And at the end, we have dance, which just returns a code reference, a PCI code reference. So let's see what I did here. The first thing would be to run this. And I'm going to use Twiggy. I'm starting with plaque up over there. Takes lib, which is the dancer that I haven't committed yet. And we're calling Twiggy, which is actually an any event-based web server. And I'm giving it the event-based app. So it just started. It's accepting connections. And we can play with this. Then I'm going to go to a different pane over there. And what I'm going to run here is that while true forever, do a request using curl to uh, 127.001.500 ping, which means go here and get a pong back and sleep 0 0.4 seconds all the time, forever. Here it is. These are the requests coming into the server. These are the responses that we get from the server with the time. And now what we're going to do, you can see it just, the more I push it, it's live, it's running. Now, what I'm going to do is call long for a long running request. Okay? Here we go. It's going to take five seconds. Then it's going to return. But notice that this is running at the same time. It took five seconds. I'm going to run it again. It took five seconds. You can see that it's still running all the time. Right? We didn't actually stop the web server from giving other request responses. Now, this is sleep. And when I run sleep, you know that it just it hangs. That's it. Until sleep is over. The space means I haven't done anything. And here you can see that when the get to slash sleep, the output for the log was only generated after it finished sleeping. It couldn't even output to the log until it was done. So calling log actually long actually lets it run. And I'm running it multiple uh, panes now at the same time. So long here. 
long here, and you can see that it's still running. Everything is still running, even though the screen is, looks a bit shitty. Um, and this is the interesting part, that we were able to return a response saying, here's a response, but still allow other stuff to go, go on at the same time. This is async. A lot of people ask about the answer to this. This took me uh, about four lines of, of uh, patch. That's it, I did it last night. Very simple. So this is the answer to, I think we're going into a very good direction. Um, and if you're interested in that, grab me later. And uh, that's it, thank you very much. <laughs>